Carl's got a constituent issue he's working on. We're live stream now. Okay, great. Thank you. So today is the 18th of March. It is 2.18 in the afternoon. It's the motor vehicle subcommittee. Um, let's go ahead and try to get some of these bills out. Um, House Bill 1391, that's my bill. We talked through everything yesterday. The amendments are pretty much um, done. Is there anybody that would like to talk or move the bill and then we'll get the final reprints. And then if anybody has any questions or concerns, we can talk about it before they are. Uh, I just, I just wanna get added on as a co-sponsor. Okay. Let's move the amendments. I move the amendments. Second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Great, on the bill as amended. Say, move favorable. Second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Let's Who wants to go, go on? What's that? Does, do we want to do a pylon in subcommittee? You can beat everybody. I think we'll probably end up doing it in full committee. That's what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, but you can beat them to the punch. Yeah, Are but we'll be in alphabetical order anyway. Yeah. No, you, you'll be ahead of them. No, I think, well, I don't know. I just think just that's wait. too confusing. I think yeah, that's too confusing. Wait for full Let's just keep moving, yeah. Okay, um, I'm gonna go through a couple of these that I think are probably um, quick, you know, more quick to go through. HB 1143, this is the Allegheny County, Garrett, Garrett County All-Terrain. My understanding of this bill, it's for like, you know, Enduro motorcycles and snowmobiles to be able to go on a, on a state road for a little bit when they're connecting trails. Um, and I don't, I don't have an issue with this. I think it's, I, I think that there's uh, some folks out there that go out there to, to recreate. And this is part of some of the things that they do. It's uh, supposedly good for tourism out there and they need all the tourism. They need all the get. tourism help they can get. So I don't for the know. record, that's current law. They're just extending the amount of the length of uh, road that you can take from like two to five miles. Yeah. It over. looks like it's just extending it from yeah to two to five. Two to I'm five. fine Move with it. Move favor. Yep. All those favor. Okay. okay. All those in favor of the favor of uh, the favorable motion signify by saying aye. Aye. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Delegate Love. Did you have a question? Oh, okay. Um, just raising my hand to say aye. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, 1143 carries. Let us go to um, one of the ones that I know is near and dear to everybody everybody here, and that is House Bill 1121. That's Delegate Jones's bill, the driver's license identification cards. Oh my yeah, is the delegate did that get worked out? Yeah, my understanding is Delegate Jones and Rachel, so Rachel, the Rachel and Rachel show, uh, have been working really, really hard. And I think that we have a bunch of compromises that, that, um, that we need to, to consider. I know they've been talking with Patrick. Patrick, is that, is that a cor uh, correct assessment of the situation? Not quite. And I only looked this about an hour ago when you guys were on the floor. Okay. Um, Rachel London um, is not, is she on here? She is. She might want to speak for herself, but she's not quite, she's happy with, 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 with the progress, but is not quite happy with the end result. Is that... Correct, Rachel? <laughs> Partially, yes, absolutely correct. Um, but that's because the amendments that Delegate Jones and I had talked about weren't represented in this reprint. She had sent me another piece that um, expanded the autism notation to additional disabilities. It, I think it said developmental, neurological, and uh, physical. Um, and then the, only, the other piece at the very end, Patrick, um, with the additional training, which is fantastic. Um, her intent was to have that training um, component. So I think it's E, uh, if you keep going down one more E. Yeah. I commit for the record for the subcommittee, we sent this out earlier today. You should have it. Um, so E6 and 7 um, was supposed to be inclusive of uh, the notation and both the blue card and the new blue envelope. Um, I talked to her yesterday and that she, she did express that that was her intent. So Rachel, are you saying that there's just a kind of a, 
Everybody has the same intent. We just need to clean up some language. Uh, uh, yes, pretty much. And just so I'm clear, I'm only speaking for the council. Uh, the whole coalition I know that sent the testimony, I'm only speaking for myself. Um, with those two things, um, we, yeah, we think it's been worked out. Okay. And who are you representing, Rachel? Who are you representing now? Sure, exactly. I, I'm the executive director of the Developmental Disabilities Council I, and the chair of the DD Coalition. I just wanted to be clear. Okay, that. thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm looking up now to see if there is. Mr. Chair? Yes. I have got not gotten the reprint of this. Can that be sent around again? Yes. Thank I you. should print it, but I'll send it again. Yeah, I don't think I have it either. This, this is April with the NDA. How are, how's everyone doing? I just wanted to jump on here and let everyone know that we just received the wording of this amendment about 45 minutes ago as well. Um, just being able to glance at it, we do have some issues with this, um, including the you know NBA altering the law enforcement training handbooks and guidance. We think that should be on the MSP. Also, the um, providing the notation on the license ID permit otherwise can cannot maintain any other records. The MPA is required to provide under V, meaning that other records are required and MPA must maintain driver's records under the interstate compact. So that means that the medical advisory board needs to be aware. So right now, the way the, the disability card is set up, you can come in, not tell anybody what your disability is and request a card. This would change that. So we're, we have some issues that we would really like to take some time with our leadership team and take to, excuse me, take to Chrissy to be able to review um, and let you guys know all the details. But we also have a few other issues with this if you'd like to go through it now or if we could at least hold it and discuss. Okay, the, the one thing that I would say as far as MSP is concerned, um, I hate to say this, April, but like, Where's MSP? Like this is typically get what gets done. Like where, where, why is not MSP here talking about that if they have an issue? And that's not on you, April. I'm not even remotely putting that on you. I'm putting that squarely on this administration and MSP. If they had an issue with this, they should have been here a long time ago to talk about it. They should have, they should have submitted some testimony. I'm looking right here. I don't see any testimony from the Maryland State Police uh, unless I'm missing it. And oh. again, this is one of those things where. They, they come later in the 11th hour, like, oh, well, we don't want this. Or, why didn't you say that like 11 hours ago? That's just me. I'm sorry. I just want to clarify. I do not believe MSP has an issue with this. They've been working with us for this outreach to their officers to train them. I just believe that it should not be on MBA. It should not stand with the MBA to update MSP with their training and guidance. That needs to come from MSP. So since we just received this wording about 45 minutes ago and trying to internally talk, I haven't even been able to connect with them. So that's okay. that's all I, I completely understand where you're coming from. Right, and, and, and that's, not, that's not even remotely on you. That, that's on, quite frankly, that's just on the administration. Like handcuffing every everybody and not letting anybody come and talk about things. That's just my tirade for a minute, which we've done off and on for the last eight years. Um, but okay, so I'm, I'm sure if they were aware of this, they would be more than happy to come and discuss. They probably would, yeah. But um, but anyway, we'll, we'll call that. Uh, so let's. What I'm thinking is maybe after floor session to give you all a few hours and we can come back to four, after four session, but I would like to kind of go through the big sweeping parts of this, just so sure. that everybody kind of has an idea of where we are, at least on the parts that we can all agree on. So that yeah. when we come back, we don't have to do that. And cause I know that everybody's going to be tired. Um, and so let's get some of the big pieces out of the way. Now, April, as it's written now, um, or as we had before, this is, I guess, to both, um, April and, and Rachel, we had the blue card. Now we're talking about putting the, the a blue envelope instead and putting it in an envelope or what, what is the current status of where we are with, with the current language? So with the current language, it looks like, yes, it's requiring developing a form to obtain the envelope. So as it is now, you come in, no questions asked. You don't have to fill anything out. You just receive the card if it's requested. The envelope, and it said the envelope should 
be included merely as a part of the card instead of separate. So I don't know if the if the intent is to fill something out on the envelope as well as the card, or is the card speaking for itself? So that's where we're at right now with that. Rachel? It's not instead of, it's in addition to the card. Is that what you're saying? Correct. So there would be an additional envelope with the card. So is, but the Rachel's way- Rachel's shaking her head now. That's the way it's written. I read it as two separate things that you can either have a card or an envelope or you could have both. So I think the problem is, is that, so the card you can come in and just get as requested. The <laughs> envelope you would have to come in and fill out a form to receive. My understanding is that the whole concept of the envelope is you could take your driver's license, put, the, put your driver's license in a very small form fitting envelope uh, and then that way, if you get pulled over, you just hand them both so that there's not two different pieces. Because the concern that I had brought up is that you have a driver's license, but you have a separate blue card. You hand the officer the driver's license at a traffic stop or wherever you may happen to be. You hand the, the, the officer the driver's license, and then the person is then looking for a card. And that, that could lead to a bad outcome if the person is getting nervous or the officer is nervous and somebody's fumbling around looking for a blue card. So the idea was to have one thing that you hand the officer. I don't know that that's the best idea with the blue card or the blue envelope, but that was the idea is either putting something directly on the driver's license or something to simplify it. Because my fear is here, officer, here's the driver's license. Oh, wait, I have a blue card. And then, whoa, 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 you know? So that's my big, that's what I'm trying to avoid. I don't know. I'm happy to hear from the subcommittee. This isn't just me. So please, if anybody has anything. Not right now. Brooke, did you say something? Sorry, I said not right now. Oh, okay. I'll get love. Mr. Chair, as you know, I really want to pass something on this, um, but- Can't hear you. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to read this um, and, and I absolutely agree. And, and, and I appreciate the work that, um, that Rachel and Delegate Jones have done on this, but now it looks like we're, we've got the license or a blue card or an envelope. And I, yeah. I wonder if that's getting more confusing. So I would like a little bit of time, if I may, to look at this. I know we're gonna meet yeah. again. Um, so it's just too important to-, to I, I, I agree, I agree. Okay. I agree. So April, you're gonna take this back and work out some of those pieces. Yes. Rachel, can you work with, April to a degree, and also with the delegate to make sure we square some of the stuff away and make sure that, because it sounded like from me, to, I talked to the delegate, and it sounded like you guys were both simpatico. So another another piece I do just want to bring up quickly, and I can respect that everyone wants some more time to review, but just something to bring to light is that there it was discussed uh, taking the notation off of the registration of off of the. Um, license plate that as it's written right now is still a piece of this so we are concerned with that piece as well um, there's been studies to show that there was additional increase in crime when it was done with rental vehicles so we even took that off and we are concerned with violence against americans with autism so we do want to make sure that that is an important piece that since it was discussed it was removed april the um, sponsor put in a separate amendment to do that. And I think the, okay. that they will, they will be merged. Okay, I appreciate that. I had not seen that. Okay, so we have what we have now. Everybody's gonna get back together and work on it. We're gonna come back tonight. Um, we're gonna come back tonight and hopefully finalize these last pieces. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, have is it possible to just ask the state police to send somebody to answer questions? Delegate Healy, I can reach out to MSP. I do not mind and see if someone can join us later. But just, I mean, they don't necessarily have to come in with a position paper, but I mean, we have questions about things that are technically, can this be done or not done or how, how onerous would it be? I mean, we, we, we have, we're kind of shooting in the dark about that. Yeah, I was hoping this was a little closer to, okay.
All right, any more questions? All right, we, re we really want to find a way to pass this bill tonight. That's what the subcommittee wants. I can tell you, every member of the subcommittee, I don't want to speak for everybody, but most, most members of the subcommittee have asked me on the floor or asked me somewhere how we passed this bill. And I thought it was all worked out, turns out. I mean, this is this is how session goes kind of toward as, as crossover goes. Okay. Um, Rachel, I'll reach out to you and I'll reach out to the delegate in the meantime. I have a little bit of time after after committee, after subcommittee. Great. Thank um, you. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. So we're going to hold that one until we can get closer to it. Let's go to Delegate Cars Bill 230. Um, we have, you've spoken with Rifkin, right, um, Patrick? And what did yeah. they come back with? What are they proposing for their final amendment? And just to remind everybody, if we end up passing this bill, we wanted to, per Delegate Learman, and I think everybody agrees, we want to kind of make this whole rental car thing go away. So we're going to expand it to, to include not only stop, stop lights, but also speed, all of it, so that we don't have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Patrick. Thank you. Well, I have the amendments. I think Molly sent them out to you earlier. I yeah. I'm, I did. I, did. I have them right here. No, I, I think they're still flawed. Um, but I, you know, whatever the subcommittee wants, I, I, they're fixable. Um, what, what they do is they, you know, they, they say that um, set up, um, and, and this was with negotiations with Brad representing Enterprise and uh, Mako. And they came to a conclusion that set up a system where they would be, the companies would be notified electronically by the counties and the, the municipalities. And, you know, and then they would handle it that way. And that's fine. If they both all, all up for it, then that's good. Um, but their language, much like Delegate Carr's language in his earlier amendment, puts everybody in, the, in that boat. And I don't think we're ready to be sending out citations, um, traffic citations on email or portals or whatever, however they set it up yeah. to you and me and to your constituents and all of that. Um, this, this is a, a voluntary thing between two consenting organizations that would set it up, I would think. Um, so I, I've just got to fix that language up. Is what I'm saying. What but about the fiscal note? Does this does this do anything to the fiscal note? I don't know if um... not the states. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but, no database interaction. No database interaction. Okay. It's voluntary. Oh. If they can't do it, they can't do it. And they they probably save a lot of money in the, a lot of money in the long run once they got it set up. So how would it work? Based and plus on the fact that they'd be collecting these citations. That's millions. So I don't think they're going to get hurt at all on the fiscal month. Send by electronic or by postal mail. Okay. Okay. So what do you want to do? Does uh, so what do we have to fix on, on the amendments? And is where is everybody on the amendments? Just to make sure that uh, just to put it in the right place in the right language, so that it's just between the rental car companies and the counties and the municipalities. I can do that. I just have a time to. If you want to vote on concept and send it to full committee. And we'll send out a reprint to the subcommittee later today. I'm comfortable with that if everybody else in the subcommittee is comfortable with that. I think we all understand the intent, but I don't want to twist anybody's arms either. So everybody okay with that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So do we have a motion on the amendments? Move the concept. Move <laughs> the concept. Okay. Second the concept. All right. <laughs> Thank you all. Um, any discussion on the concepts? Okay. All those in favor of the concept signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Brad, I'll okay. share it with you too. All right. Fix up the right. and I'll Patrick. swing by too, Patrick, if you have time to work out this one in the previous bill. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, so on the bill, as conceptually amended, um, is there a motion on the bill? So moved. Second. Second, great, thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? His name right now and read it more with the amendments. What's that, I'm sorry? He's gonna abstain right now. Okay, well, we'll be full, 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 full committee, Neil, so you'll have time and then we'll review it before that too. Jumping in on your bill. All right, um, let's move to uh, House Bill 656. That's Delegate Charcutian's. Safe access for all. This bill's been amended. 
to eliminate um, just about the whole fiscal note, except as long as we get federal funding for it. So I think that's a big piece, um, except in the first year, um, but there's a huge expectation we're gonna get federal funding. Let's talk about the bill a little bit and see. Can you give us a quick overview of this bill, Patrick, please? Yeah, um, it's been amended um, and, and it's been run by appropriations. Looks like it has, some of you have been on fiscal committees before, so you probably have a better idea, but um, it looks like a lot of money, but a lot of it is actually money that is accounted for within a reasonable expectation of appropriations. Um, and it does ensure that MDOT maintains best practices um, and their best designs to make sure they're taking all the considerations when they're evaluating safety in their projects. Um, and it took out the big broad study of roads and intersections in the state. So that's basically where we're at. And it's all, this is all a part of the continual push toward the vision, vision zero, which we adopted a few years back. I think it was 2019, 2017, something like that. Um, and we did pass uh, Delegate Polakovich's car, uh, De Delegate Polakovich's cars bill, um, which isn't so much of a companion, but it's just a, kind of another way to get to that. And I think that's why some of the stuff was pulled out in this bill. So is there any conversation or discussion on this bill? I, or, yes, Delegate Healy, I heard you. Yeah, I, I'm just uh, looking at, at the reprint that's here in front of us. I just want to make sure, I, I may have it confused with a different bill. Uh, is, is this the one where you, you talk about where there have been accidents and you they have a they, they have to go in and expedite fixing those areas first? That is the other bill. That's the that other bill. Julie's okay. bill that we passed out. Um, okay. Third well, then I, then I, yeah, I'm, okay. Uh, this is Mitch Baldwin from uh, MDOT State Highway Administration. Um, we worked with Delegate Charcutian on the bill. Um, we never came to a consensus on the, the money piece. Um, I mean, I guess the just overall issue is just that it doesn't make the pie bigger. It just essentially divvies it up in a different way. So you get the money's going to have to come from somewhere. Um, in this case, it'll likely come from uh, system preservation and bridge. Let me ask you a question if I could. Wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold. I'll wait. Hold, sorry. hold on a second. Oh, um, oh sorry, yeah. I didn't mean you. <laughs> no, my, my understanding is that is not the case. Yeah. We are expecting a significant amount of federal funds, which will increase the pie significantly. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, am so, I wrong? Am I, am no, I wrong? You're, you're right. So the, the pie is going to increase. Um, but I mean, we also have other needs. So, I mean, basically, this just puts it in one category versus the other. Okay, um, Jen. Good afternoon, everyone. Jen Brock Cancellieri uh, on behalf of Bike Maryland, we're supporting the bill. I just wanted to clarify, as I testified on the Senate side, the numbers in the bill are what was already allocated in the, tra the consolidated transportation plan with slight increases, roughly about $10 million. And the CTP acknowledges that they expect to get 3.4 billion dollars from the federal infrastructure plan so this is only like two percent of that 20 percent increase good luck okay that's that's my understanding don't get parrot yeah on this bill it says all projects which that's very troublesome to me because as a traveling engineer with the state highway for 13 years uh, we had high crash intersections and you only have a certain amount of money for high crash intersections to be improvements. And if you have to do widening for bicycles, which is an extra four foot on both sides, and then you also have to include sidewalks, what ended up happening, because we already have some of these requirements already on the state highway. So what happens when they ended up just not doing the project? It blew the cost out and they couldn't do it. And so what you had then were people who were dying needlessly at this intersection because they just didn't do the improvement because of these types of requirements. So that's why I'm going to go against it. Now there is a lot of money for from the feds for sidewalk improvements and for bicycle improvements, compatibility improvements, but those can be their own projects. 
to say it has to go on every project, that's that's the troublesome for me. Yeah, the, the only thing that I would say, the only thing that I would say to you is that um, Delegate Parrot, what we've been doing as a whole, as a society um, here in the state of Maryland is, is, it's just not enough. People are still getting run over by cars. Cyclists are still getting run over by cars. People are still getting hit in intersections. People are still getting hit in, in crosswalks, doing everything they're supposed to do. Not in every case, but there are still accidents. There was an accident in my district um, in, in, on a road, specifically in my district, where a woman was out for her morning walk with her dog, and a guy, the guy came across and ran over her dog while she was walking the dog. And another millisecond, one way or another, she would have been killed. Her dog was killed. She was walking her dog on a leash. The dog wasn't off the leash. So we, we just we just need to do better. Um, that would be my response. But Delegate Healy. Yeah, and I guess to, to, to respond to that, we do need to do better. And if they had fixed that intersection with the other improvements, it may have been better. But also all is not good for the whole state. Montgomery County is very dense. Baltimore City is very dense. Western Maryland, there are no walkers. There are no pedestrian, uh, no bicycles. At a lot of these intersections that we're talking about, they should just be able to go in and make the improvements with the context in mind. Uh, and unfortunately, this kind of bill doesn't allow for that context to occur. That's, okay. Can I respond to that? Delegate Healy, well, we're going to go right down the right down the line. Okay, thank you. I, I muted myself because I was trying to do too many things, <laughs> but um, the whole idea of this. I mean, I, I is ultimately a, a great goal, and I, I I'm concerned about what Delegate Parrot has raised. Uh, you see, we have a, older communities where you're getting roads upgraded, and I certainly don't want, and that's why I want to ask State Highway um, money to be taken away from neighborhood projects that are already in the pipeline that are already being worked on. If you're designing new stuff, or you or you're, it's a project you haven't started yet, that's one thing. But um, it, it, there are some places that have they've been in the pipeline for decades, and they're finally getting worked on. And I don't I don't want to get them like sidetracked because but we want to the do money's them right. Going to be siphoned yeah. off to something else. That's my concern. I I understand, and I'm going to go out of line in this case um, and say two, one of two things. One is. Well, I'm just going to go to delegate to the delegate Learman because she seems like she really needs to say something. Okay. So I'm going to go out of line. Maybe she can answer your question. Delegate Learman. Oh yes, thanks. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't hear you say that. Sorry. I'm, I'm um, jumping yeah, out of so line. I wanted to. Learman. Sorry, I wanted to respond that by that because I totally understand what you're saying, Delegate Healy. But this bill is tailored to keep that in mind. So on the very first page of this bill, this is all about implementing context-driven design elements, right? So in Western Maryland, it might not make sense to put a pedestrian or bike lane because that's not in fitting with the context, right? Um, and if you go down a little bit further in section 2609 on the second page, this starts with being saying we need to conduct an analysis of sites and corridors and intersections across the state with pedestrian and bicycle rider crashes. So if there's no crash and there's no you know, challenges um, because there's no bikers, then this won't end up applying. Um, so I just this bill is it's tr we're trying to narrowly tailor a challenge. Right. Um, which is that we are seeing increases in pedestrian and bike cr crashes and fatalities. I mean, it's real, it's documented. Absolutely. And so when we're using our awesome federal money that we're all really excited to be getting um, and Michael Sakata and his team and others are, you know, they're all building out our roads to make sure that before we rebuild a road where there have been bicycle or pedestrian crashes and fatalities, that we you know, make sure that we design the road in a way that it takes that into account and we create safer infrastructure. Sorry, that's, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah. I wanted, I, can I say thank you? Cause that clarifies it very well for me. I really okay. appreciate it. Yeah, sure. and, and thank you Brooke for saying that. Cause the, the, the piece that I was gonna say is what we don't wanna do is move forward in future designs that haven't been taking into context a particular turn or a particular intersection and spending, I mean, not talking about the humanity of it, just for a second, talking about the economics of it, 
um, we don't want to spend money building out something that's that's not well thought out or that's bad. We want to we want to spend it well. Anyway, um, Pilar. Thanks so much. And um, I agree with everything Delegate Learman said and, and that other people have said. And I guess the only point that I would make is just to build upon what Mitch has said is that, and it's an argument that we make, and, and maybe you all think it's just an argument for argument's sake, but, you know, our only concern with this bill has been all, you know, since we started discussions with Delegate Sharkudi in the fall and the winter, was, was the, the money and the, the specific funding. And, and, you know, we do have, we are looking forward to a lot of this federal funding coming in. And there's a lot of really exciting discretionary grant programs that we expect to utilize. And I, and I would just say and note that for the record that, you know, we, in order to utilize and leverage that federal funding, we need to be able to, you know, flexibly, not a word, <laughs> have flexibility, sorry, to move money around. And, you know, we wanna make sure that we can access that federal funds to do projects like this. Um, and like that everyone has mentioned so far. So that's all I wanted to say and um, my only comment. Thank you. Thank you, Pilar. And the only, the only response I would say to that is that, I think almost all of this, most of this is contingent upon those federal dollars coming in. I guess that would be um, Delegate Jacobs. Thank you. Um, you know, it's very concerning to me to, about this the federal funding. Everybody talks about this federal funding coming in. And last year, the si system preservation in my district was cut. The funding was cut, you know, because people weren't traveling. Gas tax uh, revenues were down because they weren't traveling due to the pandemic. And so, you know, our roads as a result for the last few years have not gotten a lot of-, of uh, Love. What, what I, yeah, that's a good word. Um, and, you know, we just passed a HUR, which in my opinion was pretty minuscule. We had a good opportunity this year to fund that in a better way. And, and uh, you know, they just, you know, wasn't that much money put into it in my opinion. So. The, the, the areas of the state that, that really need some attention from system preservation and bridge work, which I can tell you in my district is plenty, uh, you know, you keep cutting the pie into many slices and, and, you know, you're not doing anything to fix what we already have to fix. I understand about public safety and about making sure things are right. I would hope that every new project takes everything into consideration when it's being developed. But we also, if you don't take care of these roads properly, they're going to cost you twice as much if you, if the more you kind of patch them up and wait. And I know that from my own experience. I was a mayor for 12 years, and I can tell you, you don't, if you don't keep your maintenance up, your system preservation up, that it's going to cost you more in the long run. So I don't think with the money that's coming in for the additional HUR money, and more money being taken out of the pot from system, system preservation, if that's what they're saying they're gonna do, is good for, for the state. And that's just my opinion. Okay, Michael. So, you know, like, can I just ask uh, and follow yeah. up to that? Um, yeah, please, please, Jerry. From, from State Highway, or from MDOT, whoever's on the call there. Pilar. Um, you know, when, when, when they talk about this is contingent on federal funding, if that federal funding is coming in, would it would it had a would it have been earmarked for system preservation and bridge work if this bill wasn't there? I mean, sorry, some of the money, the money that's being used. Yeah, yeah. I had um, well, just before I um, jump into jump 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 into that. Um, jump dive. Jump dive. <laughs> jump dive. Um, <laughs> I know that, and everyone has said this is the, the intent of the bill is that it's contingent on federal dollars coming in, but I didn't see that in the bill. And I don't know if that's somewhere else that I, or maybe I'm not looking at the right version, but um, I didn't see that portion in the bill that this is the, the dollars were contingent on the receipt of federal funds. That's the increase that's on lines 18 to 20. 18 to 20. But, but to your point, Delegate Jacobs, that was spot on. That's the point of the bill. We've been under investing in these very important upgrades. I maybe, I'm, maybe I'm missing it. I'm missing you know, it. If, I, if I could say on page, on page three, Pilar, okay. line 18, uh, section two, the fiscal years 2025 20, to 2028 20, 
the amounts required under the paragraph of the subsection shall be increased by 10% each year. All right, based on you. based on what was said by by uh, by MDOT earlier today in this in this conversation was that the money would come out of system preservation and bridge in the bridge program. That, that's what I'm what I'm basing my concerns on that it doesn't matter where the pot of money comes from. If it's taken away from that particular part, which is in dire need, in my opinion, then you know, I guess you got to prioritize. Mitch, would you do you know where that? I mean, you said uh, system preservation and bridge. Yeah, so, okay. so I, mean, on page three. I I didn't see a provision that said the monies were contingent on federal funding. Uh, but yeah, basically, I mean, you're, I guess to put it in a simple analogy, robbing Peter to pay Paul, if that's uh I don't. I don't know that that's a very. No, this analogy. is just. Michael, it's that's just not, not accurate. That is not, not an accurate analogy. representation of what this bill does. Michael, that's not a fair uh, analogy because it's it's federal money. So you're not you're getting additional money. You're not robbing it from one to the other as long as it's additional money. There's no robbery going on. I, I'm having a hard time. I have a clarifying point for Molly. I don't think she has the right amended version up on the screen. I'm looking at a different version that has the language about the Federal Infrastructure Act. That's. Yeah, I was just from. gonna say it might be my eyes, but I still I don't I don't have the version with the federal piece in it. So okay, let me see. Can you have send that version. to us again? Just and what I, what ID number do you have on yours? Um, I have ID number for the amendment, right? That's what you're asking me. Yeah, what time? Say what time? I have twelve oh one p.m. today. Oh, then no, I, okay, perhaps I'm, I have an earlier one from 315. So maybe there was a decision made by the bill sponsor to put a different version in. Yeah, because I think this is the most updated and this okay. is one for everyone, so. It's interesting because when Delegate Learman was talking about um, improved pedestrian bike for ride safety. Um, that part came out. Can, yeah, exactly. I say, I just saw that. I had the old version too. I just find it. I think you have a newer version. I think somebody, perhaps a sponsor, thinks that these should be merged. That's what, um, that's my guess here. I have a 12.01 p.m. also. All right. Can we clarify what version? Because yeah, my understanding was it was contingent on federal version. funding as well. Patrick, do you know what the what the most recent version is? Uh, Twelve oh one is the most recent version. But if there's another amendment that it's supposed to be merged with, then I, I can make that happen. I just didn't know that. It was just on the increase, though. It wasn't the numbers. Uh, Jen, it what, was just that. Jen, what's the idea on yours, Jen? Tell me where I find what you're asking me. Is it what are you three, looking at? Eight? Reprint. Yeah, I'm looking at a reprint. It should be right in the top middle. Yeah, it says HB 656 slash 393429 slash one. I think we're supposed to be working on a merger here. But it's not contingent. It just is the increase is contingent. The 10 percent mr chairman can we uh, i don't know what else i guess we don't have anything else to talk about but this seems like kind of a crazy discussion that it is like going nowhere because we no. don't even have the correct amendments so can we get that together and then come back and revisit this yeah that's what we can do but it's not a it's not a crazy discussion we're, we're like airing out some of these things ahead of time so that when we come back we don't spend quite as much time yeah but, but i, I can't think follow that it i do think I that that's I, I can't follow it. I can't let, follow let me, what we're... You know what? Let, let me finish. Okay. Let, let me finish. Um, so I, I think that we're we're making progress because we're hearing people out and we're working through it. With that said, I do agree with Delegate Foley. So what I'd like to do is hold the bill until we come back after session to review um, 1121 and review this too. Hopefully between now and then we can get the correct updated amendments uh, because I think that uh, they're right. Like, I don't see that part about it being contingent either. I see parts of it, but not all of it. So let's get some clarification on those things and then come back. We'll only have two bills on the list tonight. And hopefully the work that we've done to, so far now will we'll help to streamline them for later tonight. So it'll be more, more quick. Before we go, I see a couple of hands. Delegate Healy. 
You're muted. You're still muted. I just wanted to see if I could get the reprint once it's all done. Just we will. We're going to get the reprint out to everybody. Copy of it so I could print it out and read it. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. Okay. I'm gonna walk right over to to Patrick when we're done here to to work a couple of those pieces out. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Delegate Love, did you have anything else, sir? Yes, don't we have one more bill to discuss? Did I miss it? Nope. Um, nope. Clean cars? We already did that. We did that first. Oh, I, then I must have missed yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so that is it. We'll just have those two bills tonight. There is a, there, if anybody has any ideas on something we may have missed because we've had so many bills, please let me know. There's maybe one or two others that may, if they don't look too controversial, I might try to slip in for tonight. Um, I can grab anybody on the floor between now and then just call me or text me if there's something that you're thinking that we need to do something about. There have been so many bills. Um, at the, at the, last, the last five or six days, um, we've just been kind of triaging it. <laughs> So that's why we are where we are. So are there any questions before we're done? Nope, all right, thank you all very, very much.